Well, my next guest, a dear friend, highlights the price tag on a bipartisan deal. He's got a new op-ed for the Wall Street Journal entitled The High Cost of Bipartisanship. He should know something about cost, having been the director of the Office of Management and Budget, as well as chief of staff, my dear friend, Mick Mulvaney. So, Mick, you think, let me just get this right. One trillion is too much money to spend. Now, you have a point there. We'll get into that in a minute. I just wanted to remind, you know, refresh your otherwise excellent memory that in, there were <laughs> days when you were still at Budge OMB and I'd come on there in the NEC and our boss wanted three trillion, if you recall, right? Yeah. And you and I yeah. and your deputy then and then later director Russell Vaught, we kind of got him down to one trillion. But now you're saying one trillion is actually too much. Hey, Please Larry, elaborate. It's great to be back. Um, <laughs> great to sort of see your face. Um, <laughs> no, it's not the size of it. It's the fact that it's not paid for. And I know I'm speaking. Um, to somebody who has said the words before, deficits don't matter. I won't give away which one of us has actually said that, but <laughs> it wasn't me. Um, it's, 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 it's not the size of the thing. Look, we need infrastructure. We need roads. We need bridges. And you can have a debate about you know, whether or not health care is infrastructure. That's not what this is. This bill is roads and bridges for the most part when you look at it. It's what you and I would consider real infrastructure. My point deals with the, the pay-fors, which is really one of those terms that only exists in Washington, D.C., uh, and it's really a meaningless thing. They're not paying for this with any new money. They're using accounting gimmicks. They're, 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 they're using stuff that's already been spent. Um, I think you and I have talked a little bit about the fact that some of this money is coming out of the money that Republican governors didn't spend on uh, expanded uh, state unemployment insurance. It's just that classic sort of Washington dance where politicians slap themselves on the back, say, look at us, we're bipartisan, we're working hard, when it's really easy to spend borrowed money. If I put you and me and Bernie Sanders and Chuck Schumer in a room and said, here, divide up a trillion dollars, we would be able to figure out a way to do that. That is not statesmanship, and it's not the sort of thing we should be celebrating. That was the point of my column. Well, okay. A um, couple questions. One of them is, even if you could pay for this stuff, a lot of it, I mean, I, my friend Steve Moore makes some good point. Your friend, my friend Steve Moore. I happen to think some of this stuff is quite good, but not all of it. Steve says they should have had a, a Keystone XL pipeline back in this package. Um, too much Green New Deal in this. Way still too much Green New Deal in this. Um, doubling the size of the IRS in tens of thousands. That's in his too. Shouldn't have done it. Um, too much money for mass transit. We could argue about that. I don't know. $50 billion for more high-speed railroads. That just sounds like uh, junk to me. That's Nancy Pelosi's dream or the, the one in California that no one's going to use. Um, too much unionization. But, Mick, the one that just killed me, I, you know, I read your op-eds with great care. I underline them. I use a yellow marker. I'm okay with the public-private partnerships, but you said in your op-ed that you were okay with yeah. an infrastructure bank? Tell me that no, was, I, I, you didn't I, really mean that. That must have been James Taranto adding that or something from the Wall Street. You, another Fannie Mae, another Freddie Mac, an infrastructure bank from Mick Mulvaney, the founder of the Freedom Caucus? It can't be true. It just can't be true. If you, if you read it closely, and I know you've got it in front of you, what it says is those are, those are ways to leverage other money, but they don't create money. They're being offered by the authors of this bill as a way to pay for it. They're going to do an infrastructure bank. They're going to do public-private partnerships. That doesn't generate any new money. That was my point. They may have merits, they may have demerits on their own, but they are not sources of funds like raising taxes. And I was frustrated during this entire process that the only place it seems that Republicans and Democrats can agree in on is how not to pay for things. The Republicans agreed, or the Democrats agreed not to raise the corporate tax. I'm good with that, but that's a way not to pay for this. Republicans uh, originally offered an increase in the, in the sales, uh, the gas tax, and a fee on electric vehicles, which makes sense, by the way, since they don't pay the gas tax, yet they use right. the roads, and then they gave up on that. These were agreements on how not to pay for things. Again, the point of the article was this. Bipartisanship is hard. There's no question about it. But it's really easy when all you're doing is focusing on spending the money. Make them sit down in a room and hammer out a bipartisan way to pay for something, and then I will be impressed. By the way, 
It's the way every city government works, every state government works, every local government works. Everybody who doesn't have a printing press has to sit down and make hard decisions. We're going to take money away from this and spend it over there. We're going to spend less here and more there. We're going to do this this year and not next year. Those are the type of things that governments do everywhere in this nation, except in Washington, D.C. And I'm just tired of Republicans and Democrats alike slapping themselves in the back and said, we, we did a great deal. We have a bipartisan plan to spend a trillion dollars. That is not praiseworthy. Well, I agree with most of what you're saying now. By the way, I also agree with the EV fee, electric vehicle fee. I think that's spot on. Um, I just want to remind, when you and I and Russ Vaught got POTUS, our Trump POTUS, to get down from three trillion to one trillion, because he loved infrastructure more than we did, but Russ Vaught had a thought. I'm going to give him credit on the air. You pro he said pay fors could include budget savings in other parts of the budget. How about that? In <laughs> other words, spending cuts, budget cuts. Now, that's almost unheard of. I know it's a radical idea. It hasn't been around probably since Phil Graham left the Senate. But I'm just saying. Maybe I'll get Russ Vaught to come on the show because we he did this elaborate rack up and I got to get out the producers are screaming at me. Remember, though, we paid for a lot of the trillion by so-called budget savings, a.k.a. budget cuts. Yes. Wow. Think of that. Cutting the budget, which is when the dust clears and the emergency money goes away. You know what? You're going to be a 25 percent of GDP spending, which is a, a bad thing. Very bad. Mick Mulvaney, I got to jump. Spend I got to go. I don't have any time. I love you. I don't have any time. We'll get you on, you know, on the radio, we can talk for a half hour. Anyway, folks, Mick Mulvaney.